Greetings and welcome back to Smartwatch Ticks. The thing that's so exciting about working with smartwatches and fitness and health bands and such is that the technology is constantly improving. Ah, and the boxes are getting harder and harder to open. We have something fun to show you today. Here's a little manual about it in Chinese and under the little hidden flap. Hello, hello. We have a new health band. This one is called the E29. Don't forget that now. Uh, let's get it all kind of prepped. We've got some coverings over the uh, bracelet itself here, which is that TPU kind of uh, rubbery, definitely waterproof uh, material. Oh, look on the bottom. There's two electrical plates and a heart rate diode type sensor. You're going to get some languaging skills here. This is called PPG and uh, the plates relate to ECG. Those two plus this one here in the front make electrical contact for you to do your heart rate and other analysis. And um, it's got some of the latest, greatest technology built into it. What else is in here? There's a quality assurance little seal. QA certification, good. And then there's nothing else, I don't think. Is there anything? Nope, it's empty from here. So where's the charger? How do you charge it? <laughs> Opposite the big button, you can pull off the band. And that's how you charge this one. So what are we looking at? And we'll go take a look at the manual. We are looking at, like I said, the E29. And from Banggood, Banggood is sending us all these amazing ECG plus PPG heart rate devices. This one's very inexpensive and uh, very feature rich because it uh, incorporates tethering to a new app we have not seen before. It's an upgrade app. Uh, we'll get to take a look at that in a minute. In the meantime, what has it got? It's compatible with both Android and iPhone, Bluetooth 4.0. All those languages are supported. IP67 life waterproof. IP67 and 68 are the kind you can dunk underwater. It handles all of these different support functions. And more information, blood pressure and heart rate sensor. So the technology we're talking about, and this is a bit of a repeat for some of you, it's ECG, electrocardiogram, and PPG. You'll have to look that one up. And if you go to scholar.google.com, I've mentioned this in other videos of similar prod, uh, products, you can get extensive information. In a minute, I'll show you some of the documents and some of the articles that talk about how this technology actually works to interpret and deduce and refine your uh, biometric measurements. And that's really what this fitness band is about. It does some basic simple stuff, has a, a watch on the front of it, of course. And if you press and hold just above the little silver button, you can cycle through all these different things. It says, please long press in order to do the blood pressure. Here's your step count, your calories burned, there it's trying to do blood uh, heart rate and uh, blood oxygen. Here it's trying to do blood pressure. If you just leave it there and walk away, it turns the diodes on and it's using the optical technology for that part. Here's your uh, overall sleep time. Here's a sports mode. Messages that you have coming in from tethering. More and a long press gets us into more supposedly there we go there's a stopwatch find function and uh, basic information about the band itself and then long press takes us back out of that and off and then we're back to the watch face of which you have two that one and if you press and hold it's a long press and hold by the way you get to a digital watch face. The button down here, oh, I guess it's just uh, toggling it too. On some of the other ones, 
you had to press above it, but the actual button itself works as a toggle. Great. Let's look at the manual. <laughs> I should look at the manual, right? I would learn so much if I would just read the manual. Here it is in Chinese, and on this side is in English. And it's in a rather big format, so we'll have to work our way through this. I think it goes up and down. Yeah, it does. All right. It's going to go here, 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 and here, but I'll just show you two at a time. You can freeze frame it if you want to. And gives you some idea of some of the pages. Now, you can accumulate the data uh, from this device, either by touching on the device, as it's talking about here. Wow, look at all those different sports modes it supports, too. Much more sophisticated than just the basic bands we've seen in the past that do the ECG and uh, PPG. There's the QR code. You want to scan that, you'll be able to download WearFit 2.0, or you can just go to the Google Play Store and you're able to, uh, to download it directly from there. And it's quite a sophisticated app as well, as you'll see shortly. And some more information on binding the bracelet. That means pairing it, tethering it, and data parameters and information. Okay. All right, I'm going to have the band here. I'm going to get the app ready on the phone, and we'll take it to the next level. Again, it's the WearFit 2.0 app that we're going to be using. When you open it up and you tether it to the band, you come into this opening home page where at the top you have your step count, then across the bottom are these little chiclets for your sleep, your heart rate, your blood pressure. This is using the PPG, I believe. Blood oxygen, your fatigue level, which oftentimes has to do with the timing spacing between your heartbeat uh, pulses, and then the ECG information. I can hit the plus key, and I can do any of these things. And it floats on top of the other one. So the apps are getting really, really cool. And then mine is where you get into your basic information. You can actually log in, set up your own account on this system. You can, of course, put in your own uh, metrics here and your goal, your personal information is in here. And wow, check this out now. I'm not even going to touch the first one, but that usually says sex. Uh, and there's a choice and it's a little bit different now you have age and height and weight and step length which is really good because that gives you better accuracy on the distance traveled from your step count if you actually adjust your step which you can do here you have a choice of wearing it on the left hand or right hand for all of those folks who like to do that uh, you can switch and I usually go in uh, English measurements weight in pounds or kilograms okay then you get into your sleep time setting when you typically fall asleep and wake up you can adjust those times and then there's your measurements the systolic pressure is in a range of between what and what what do you normally see your blood pressure coming in at okay your upper and lower from the medical reports you have already. And if you're interested in something like this for blood pressure monitoring, you probably have some of this data from your doctor. And you may be pumping up 140, 150 um, in your systolic, I don't know. Your diastolic is uh, available here. Your heart rate range, um, you can adjust right here as a typical lower and upper rate. And then your blood oxygen percentage are all adjustable. Never seen that in an app before. Not really sure how it works in the computation either of the results, but it's here and it's, uh, it's something new. Then you have a reference value for your own private reference mode, which I think overrides all of this. If you put this in here and you say that when you go to the doctor, you typically come in at 125 over... Mm, 75 right making some stuff up right now but you have that data from your doctor um, when you put that in now that sets a reference value of blood pressure that can help you measure your blood pressure more accurately 
If you don't set this default value, it'll be based on the system, and the system is based on the measurement range. I think that's how it's working. Why you want to do this is oftentimes these things will give you a deviation from an average, and that average could be floating based on different factors, ambient lighting or hair on your arm or who knows what. And so if you set your let your average, like this little bar here, if your average on the machine is like this, but if your average is here, then uh, instead of up here, then you know your deviation from your readings from that average could give you a better accurate reading than if it was deviations around this. It's an offset one way or another that should hone in more closely in your actual readings. That's what we have here on this page. And then there's a next up here where you can set your, uh, your step goal from 4,000 in 1,000 increments way on up there, however high you'd like to go. I usually run it at about 8, striving to get up to, to 10 one day, uh, and hopefully I can meet my 8. You notice it said data synchronizing. So whenever you make any changes on this, like I'm going to go from age 27. Oh, you got to put in your whole birth date thing. Uh, whatever. Eh, I'll just cancel that and adjust them later. Height's easier. We can change it here. 24 inches. I don't think so. What's about six? 60 is five feet, right? Five feet four to pick something. Weight in pounds. 150. Your step length. Uh, 48. Huh. I thought you could get even a bigger step length, but let's just say 40. Okay. And we're going to wear it on the left hand. And I set all the distances and I say save and it saves successfully. And it's synchronizing that to the band as well. So that's your information. Again, you can log in and create an account here if you want to. And I'm not sure if that means your data will be synced over time or not, binding the bracelet, third-party login, or just enter directly, which is what we're doing right now. Now, the next uh, entry is called Exception Details. And in order to get this data for you, I had to actually go out and accumulate some data. So this is now tomorrow from yesterday. Uh, and here are some entries of intrigue that uh, popped into the Exception Details. And that gets back to, uh, I believe, what we were talking about earlier here in the personal data that looks like this. In personal information, we had these measurements, and, and it's measurement alarm. So I believe what's happened is whenever I exceeded any of these entries above or below, it pops out in that Exception list. Let's take a look. Right here, they are. Too high of a heart rate at 1,400 today. By the way, I've been doing some yard work and doing some relaxing, and you can see the variety of uh, information just in the exception report. Here's this morning while I was asleep, and look, my blood oxygen is low, my heart rate was low. Very interesting. And then back to, uh, to yesterday. So that's the exception details. We'll see more when we get back into the actual data itself. Device management, I'm attached to the E29. That's the power level in the band. Here's all the different things that uh, dump energy, 80%. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Uh, connection management is where you can, you know, scan for the, uh, it's where you tether basically and you can unbind or disconnect the bracelet. Your smart reminders are for uh, vibrating the band when you have a call, a message. You can have it uh, let you know when you're out of Bluetooth range. Set alarm clocks, sedentary reminders, app reminders for all these different apps. I'm following the president now. Got to see what he says. Um, and I can get a push right when he tweets. Interesting. Um, see, quiet hour model. You can turn on that it'll stay quiet and not interrupt you with any of these alarms from a starting time to a uh, stopping time the very next day. That's a nice feature to have. And that's all in the smart reminders. Then you got your raise hand to show the screen, which is on. <clears throat> there you go. And if I turn that off, 
Well, then you have to go out and save it, I'm pretty sure. No, I guess it turned it off right away. All right, you have hourly measurements. So you can take uh, measurements of your various, and I can't see it, but your various uh, biometrics, basically, uh, including heart rate and blood pressure. Firmware upgrades where you would check to see if you've got a new upgrade, and it says it's the current one, and that's in device management. Then you have overall settings. There, you see it's synchronizing. You can have 12 or 24 hour time. It's the afternoon right now. There we go. It's three in the afternoon, so it's actually in 12 hour time. Look at this. You can actually tie into Google Fit and transfer your data to Google Fit from this tiny little band. Nice. Um, you can connect WeChat running if you want to do that. Uh, the data sources you have are the bracelet, or if you don't have it set up, you can actually use the mobile phone for a step counter uh, just to accumulate your step counts from the app by itself. Uh, you can clear the bracelet, clear the cell phone, and reset the bracelet if you want to and quit the whole thing from right here. That's all in settings, and about tells you this is the current edition, brand new, of, uh, of this app. Uh, the addition checking, I guess, to see if there's any updates. You can send feedback and get some overall help on this app, which is good. Yeah, you got some good, good information, basic stuff here. And this app can work with a variety of different bands. So this particular band um, tethers to it, and uh, we're seeing a lot of good stuff out of it. So that's everything that's in the mine. Plus, again, lets you have uh, do an exercise, of which there's a few to choose from. You have training plans. By the way, you actually need to create an account and log in to take advantage of those two. You can find the bracelet, and it's vibrating right now and lighting up. And you can do a photograph. So if you go in here, it switches you over to the camera. You have the button on the watch, and if you press the button, you'll take a picture. So that's all built into it, too. Now, when we go home, this is where we get to the good stuff. That's my step count for today. Press, and I can go in and see overall target and the time of the day that I did all of this stuff. I have the ability to export that to any of these different sources, as well as here. But you can't send it like to email. You have to post it to one of these things. I wish I could just add, send it to email. When you go back, you get into each of these, which uh, you saw in the original show of this when I opened it up, that they were in a different order. That's because you can press and hold and actually move them around. And I like that particular order, the heart rate and blood oxygen and fatigue here. You're PPG blood pressure, your ECG blood pressure, and then it's the sleep count. So jumping in, sleep last night looked like that. I was awake a bit. A lot of light sleep, just a few moments of deep sleep. And not only does it give you the summary, but look at this. It gives you everything from 2258 when it started tracking me uh, in light sleep for 44 minutes two minutes of deep sleep before I probably snored myself back to light sleep, and so forth. And all of that data, minute by minute, here's when I was awake for 13 minutes, according to the band, two more minutes of deep sleep, and all that is captured. So really, really robust sleep information for the current today. You have previous days, uh, by sliding back. And of course, I haven't done any for any previous days, but I presume all of the uh, extensive uh, information would be there as well. So if you got some sleep issue, you might be able to really get a good record of what's going on by doing the sleep thing. When you go into heart rate, this is the actual PPG. That's the green diode heart rate. Uh, here's the track record of my heart rates. I'm not sure what's going on with that at 1400. Might have been moving the band or doing something. Um, here's 108. It was around this time though that I was working outside and putting on some definitely beats per minute. Here's last night all the way through the automatic every hour reading. So you can see I'm getting reasonably believable data out of this. 
Uh, for me, it feels right. Uh, that could be an anomaly. It could be that I was doing something and really, you know, walking up the hill and that I had a, a really high heartbeat. And again, that's in the exception record that we saw already. I can go into real-time measurement or take a one-time measurement. When you do the one-time measurements, they are entered here. Those are the ones that you're seeing uh, that aren't at an even zero, zero. Uh, so you have that capability for your heart rate as well as your blood oxygen. Similar type of uh, data, usually in the 97, 98, but look at me at night. If I really am dropping that low and having a super low blood pressure, I probably need to tell my doctor and see uh, what might be going on. I don't like the word serious risk. So I'm learning something. That's good to know. Good information I didn't have before. The fatigue level, not sure how that is computed, um, but these are the numbers from 1. I'm getting 20s and 30s. Every hour, it's taking a, a reading of my fatigue level as well. And I can do a timely measurement. It tells you what they are. You're tired if you're at 10. Uh-oh, there's my sliding brightness is on that edge. Um, if I'm at 38, your tired rate is mild fatigue and so forth. So it gives you a little description of each of them there too. Another interesting data thing. Now we get into blood pressure. Here's the overall blood pressure readings, and it's always saying it's normal overestimate if it's within the, the range. I'm getting 121 over 80-ish. Here uh, was higher and higher, and this definitely was when I was out working in the yard. So I'm having higher blood pressure in the early morning hours. It was, yeah, between 8 and 10 I was doing all that. Then I took the band off, took a shower, and I probably missed the uh, 10 and 11 o'clock automatic reports. Uh, here's the earlier morning reports, 113, 108, and so forth for blood pressure. At 2, 3 in the morning, not sure why I don't have 4 and 5, but uh, there's the blood pressure readings. And 100% accurate, I can't really say, but they tend to be believable to me. And they are changing, so that's good to know. The only deficit one, the only one I've got problem with now, we've done all these others, is this ECG. I'm not getting, um, I'm not getting it to work, folks. Uh, I've only had it work twice, and I'm trying it constantly. I don't know if it's an issue with this particular unit. The two plates on the bottom, I've tried wetting my hand and arm and drying it. I've pressed and held it. I've done everything you need to do. And I'm not getting much success in getting a, uh, an EKG report, to be honest with you. Again, I don't know if that's just a problem with the band. I don't think it's a problem with the app, because when it did work, uh, I got two of them. The first one, normal, I ran it all the way through, and I'll show you that in a second one. See, it's now trying to sync for, see if there's any more. This other one, I interrupted partway through, and it didn't give me any, uh, any valid data at all. So when I go in here to the normal one, it starts playing it back just as it recorded it. I could pause it, I can zoom it, I can do all sorts of things with it, and I can actually export it too. So it gives you data about your ECG, the conclusion, how to judge your heart health, and then it's got all of this stuff. This is for entertainment only, mind you. A medical doctor is who you should see if you are getting anything other than zeros down here. Um, but it's got a lot of different categories that it's giving you some, some information on. And, and I'm not sure what all that means. Let's see if anything clicks. Yeah, you may be hungry, too tired to remember to feed. <laughs> Hypertension, every meal should eat, not eat too full because too full will make reflux heart blood relief relative decrease. Um, advice information, but you are getting a percentage out of this data somehow from what they're reading from your chart. And there is a way you can export this to any of these places that you'd like to go. And you can create a PDF. And when you do, and I already did, that's why it went so fast, you get this chart. And then you can generate the chart um, 
and, and copy that and, and send it uh, via email, uh, print it out. When you open it as a PDF, you can actually expand it and look at all of that information. So really robust app. I'm very, very impressed with the app. I'm disappointed I can't get a heart rate out of this. Oh, wait, a new one popped in from 926 this morning. Wow. Okay. Maybe it did work. Okay. I got one. Uh, another one. Uh, hard to tell. And then they can generate PDF off of that. Oh, yeah. Much more noisy. Look at that. I don't think that one completed properly. Uh, but you can see it's really actual data. It's not some fictitious thing uh, making lines. It's actually your heart information. And that's the history, oops, keep hitting that, of the uh, ECG. I could click to start, I could hold the band, but I'll waste two minutes of your time because I know it's, it's not really working well. Home, it's all of that. Mine was all of the information that we looked at before. This takes you into this week's health score. And you have it by week. Here's this week, last week, and then it goes by dates. And you've got this overall computation. The exercise is falling below this week, but I'm just getting started. Totals, sleep information, heart rate, blood pressure, blood oxygen, and fatigue on a weekly scheduled summary. So folks, uh, whatever band you get, uh, I'm suggesting you try to get one that syncs with the WearFit 2.0 because this is one of the best apps I've ever seen. Let's jump back into the band for a little bit, take a look at how we take some of the measurements. Now, this has zero because it's tomorrow, not yesterday, and all that great data I accumulated is gone. But I want to walk through these and uh, get some biometrics so you don't have to see just what the app can do. You can actually see what the band can do. For this, of course, I'm going to need to put it on. And one thing about this particular band above all the others is it really needs to be nice and tight. So you squeeze down like this. It's two prongs. So you're going to come over here, find a couple of holes to push it in. Make sure it's on there. Now, you know, that's uh, from a different band I was wearing. I've always got something on my arm. And we're in the uh, blood pressure, I'm sorry, the heart rate and blood oxygen mode right now. And once I got there, it immediately turned the diodes on and started looking. But you notice it didn't come up with any bogus information. It waited till I actually had it on my arm before the calculations proceeded. So we're using PPG. I'm not touching the electrode, mind you. It just vibrated and it locked in with the final measurements, and there they are. When I touch it again, I come right back to where I was. Touch it one more time. <clears throat> Hello. Touch it one more time, and I move over to blood pressure. Again, this is using the diodes, the PPG. And the jury's out on the total accuracy of this. Reports I have is it can get you close but it's like a moving average. So if you've been really working out a lot, it may not be as close to accurate as if you're just sitting in a rested state. Um, I don't know, of course, about if you have to have this at your heart level like you do with the cuffs, if it matters uh, on whether or not the capillary response is really intense because it's hanging below your heart like it is for me right now, or if it's above your head, if you'll get the same kind of data or just exactly how it's doing it. But I'd suggest you just correlate what you see here with what you get from the doctor's office or your own uh, cuff band, if you have one, or you go to the drugstore and stick your arm in the machine there. It just vibrated and locked it in. So it's saying I'm 123 over 77, which is believable. And you saw the data that I did on the actual app where it's doing this every hour automatically. Whoops, I touched it again. Um, so, and that, that was changing, so good chance that everything is going uh, to be close to what your actual numbers are. We just moved into the sleep report, of which I have none because I didn't wear it last night, but if I had, 
it would just give me a quick synopsis of how many hours and minutes of sleep I had last night. If I press and hold on some of these, we can go into another menu. If it doesn't, then that's all there is. So no deeper analysis shown here on light sleep versus deep sleep. Here we get into sport. Now this is really different. I press and hold and I enter the sport mode. We've got push-ups, running, cycling, jump rope, squatting to take a, well, never mind, um, swimming, and walking, as far as I understand. And then press and hold will get you out of this mode. So I'm going to go to running and I'm going to press and hold. And this takes you now into a sports mode where it's got a stopwatch and it's doing something. I don't know how this works. So it's something we're going to have to figure out together. Um, oh, oh, you can touch here. Wow. It is sensitive separate from the button. I didn't realize that. I thought we were just like one thing there, but... Okay, that was a, that started it, and it's counting seconds and uh, hundreds. And this is, I don't know, counting steps against this. A whole nother level of information based on what's happening in this mode on the watch. If I... Oh, I, I guess it is. You start and stop here. It's not sensitive up there. I think the edge of my finger is touching the button. I'm so confused because a lot of these, you, you, this is just an electrode and the button actually is up here in the glass. You've seen that. But this one, it's just one button and it's right here. And I can stop it and I can press and hold, I imagine, is how you get out of this. All right. And here's where it would give you data about your time, your steps, your calories burned, and your distance walked calibrated to when you started it and stopped it and then press on that hold and we should jump back to there and we could switch to different modes like that one i'm curious what do you think he's doing leaping off of a tall building again we have a stopwatch going and uh the main thing is you look at the data and see what's collected let it go for just a few seconds now we press and hold Notice it's still running. Aha, it jumps out of it. All right, we're getting the same categories of data. So I'm not sure, again, what is different between these different um, styles of exercise that it's showing. And that returns us back. But another little area we can make measurements from in the sports. Here's our uh, messages. And it says I have two. I have a little bit of text from one of them, but I can't go to another page. And if I press and hold it, uh, it takes me out. So I'm only getting a little bit of the newest, I presume, message, but it tells me how many I've got. So maybe you can get enough actual written information to give you a hint of what just came in. Then we have a whole more category, which includes press and hold. The stopwatch, a find, the phone, and the information about the band, and a return. From the stopwatch, if I press and hold, it vibrated. And now, that I guess meant you're in the mode, now I can touch it to start and stop it. Really confusing. you got to figure these things out. Then if I press and hold again, long press, it vibrated, reset to zero, and now it just loops through these. And return. So we got a couple of submenus. Off, you press and hold, you get a yes or a no. You can toggle between those. If I say no, that's how I get out of this and get back without turning it off. And you're back to time where pressing and holding changes you to an analog watch. This one is the EKG. If I press and hold it, please long press, you see it's now giving us that uh, moving chart. And I need to hold my finger on here for two minutes to gather the information if it's actually working. 
And what I've seen when we trigger it from the app is I'm really hard time getting it uh, to work, unfortunately. I really think that's an issue related to the band itself because it's dealing with these two electrodes on the bottom, making good contact with the skin. They need to be moist. Um, oh, it just vibrated. And I guess it failed. Okay, so it knows it's not getting the signal through. But maybe uh, just testing it and working with it uh, would give you better information. It's worth a try anyway. And, of course, we can pop the band top off, and that's how you plug it in to charge it. And that's a quick review of what happens when you go through the band itself and all the things that it can do for you. I knew I had this around here somewhere. There's the PDF printout of that first heart wave report that I just uh, showed you on the actual phone. You've been watching Smartwatch Ticks. I hope I'm not boring you with this stuff. There's a lot of technicality here, but it's, uh, it's really fun as we move deeper into making these wearables really useful as human, medical, scientific, entertainment interface devices. <laughs> wow, there's a, a box here you can click to see all of the ECG plus PPG um, devices I've reviewed so far, and I'll have a link for that down below as well. And we'll see you back here again soon. Thanks for watching.